So I'm starting with brand new clay and I'm packing it into a little ball. Hopefully there's no air bubbles in this. I'm going to start by putting that in the center here. Push and turn, push and turn, get it centered, then water. Now if I push with this hand in, you can see the clay gets taller. And if I push with this hand down, you can see it gets wider. So the way we center is by pushing from the side and the top at the same time and forcing the clay against both of your hands. So you can see I'm pressing down on the top and I'm pressing in from the side. You use this part of your hand more than the fingers because it's a, a stronger set of muscles. And if your clay is off center, then nothing's gonna work. So you have to start with centered completely, no wobble. A little water on the top. I got my hand against the, the wheel, the palm against the clay to hold everything steady. And I'm using my thumb to put a hole in the middle like a donut. how deep you make that is going to determine the thickness of the bottom of your vessel. So if you look down inside there, you'll see the bottom of the cup. This is how you check the thickness. Take a needle tool, stab it down until it hits the wheel, put your finger alongside it, pull it up, and you can see that's the thickness of the bottom of the cup, and that's perfect. Just how I like it. So, and that little hole will kind of fill in as we keep working. So I'm gonna try and open this up with my thumb by going straight across. The idea here is that the, I'll draw this from your perspective. This is the wheel. This is your ball of clay. This is the inside of the cup. You want this to be straight down, straight across, straight up. A lot of people get a U shape here, and then it's too thick on the sides here like this. So what you want, there's more slip on there. What you want, there's the wheel, there's your ball of clay. You want this hole to be straight down, straight across, and straight up. So you can see in here, we want the bottom to be nice and flat, and I can use a sponge to compress that, get it nice and clean, pack all the clay molecules down so that the, the bottom of the cup becomes real strong. Right, some water. I got a wet sponge on this side, wet hand on this side, and I'm going to press the two together like this. You can see the clay already gets taller. The idea here is I'm pushing my thumbs against each other to make sure everything operates as one solid piece. And just squeeze and pull. Go a little taller. I'm gonna squeeze with the sponge, keep it steady with my finger on the inside, and pull it up. A lot of people, when they're working on the wheel, they worry too much about the outside, what the outside looks like. You need to think about the inside, what shape you want the inside to be, and then make the outside match that. So it's a little wide. This is called collaring in. I got water on my hands and water on the clay. I'm just gonna squeeze it in and pull up. Makes it skinnier. You could do it with the fingertips like this. Squeeze and pull. Make it skinnier. And do one more like this. We want an even thickness on the wall all the way up. 
nice and steady. So that's a pretty good size for a cup. You got too much water on the inside, so I use a sponge to soak that out and gently sweep the inside of the cup. Get rid of any fingerprints or lumps. Kind of want to make it wider on the bottom and narrower at the top. I'm just going to bring it in a little bit on the top here and go on the inside and kind of press that out. Bring it in like this. I have this tool that I made. I'm going to use that to clean up the bottom. You can see here the clay kind of flares out at the bottom where it meets the wheel. So I'm going to use this to cut a bunch of that extra clay off. Like this. I'm using this small metal rib tool. It's got some clay caked on it. I want to make sure the edge nice and clean. And I'm going to go one hand on the inside to support it and use the rib on the outside to scrape and clean up the shape. of this just came off the outside so that is really soft it's a lot of slip and a lot of moisture and when you scrape that off the outside it helps compress the clay molecules makes it real strong on the outside and also drier which in turn makes it stronger I also like to clean up the back This, especially if you have masonite or wooden bats, anything you leave on there is going to uh, hold moisture and cause it to warp. So the top is a little irregular. You can clean it up like this, but when you collar in and you take this much clay and put it into this much space, sometimes you get a little waviness there. The clay doesn't know where to go. So you can use a needle tool like this. I'm going to gently rest my middle finger on the inside, thumb on the outside like this, and just gently cut and take the top off like that. Nice and clean. And this is a piece of goat skin. I just put that right here, smooths it out. So you don't get any sharp edges right there where people are drinking from. So that's a finished cup. And a good way to check your work. Take a wire like this. We're going to go underneath halfway and up through the middle. And you can see the thickness of the wall. It gets a little thick down here at the bottom. That's where trimming comes in, but you can see the thickness of the bottom of the cup. Nice flat bottom, good taper on the sides, not too much. It's a good cup.